Denver 7 News starts right now. And we're tracking Harvey lingering over southeast Texas, downgraded to a tropical storm. This is a live look from the shores there. Harvey may be weakening, but it's still dumping rain on already vulnerable areas. Rivers are rising, streets are already flooding, and this slow-moving monster won't go away soon enough. We'll take you live on the ground in just a second. And if you drive in downtown Denver, you might want to pack some patience. We'll look at changes to your commute in the coming weeks. And later, the Broncos felt right at home for their first preseason game at Mile High. Broncos insider Troy Rank will break down the game for us. We begin, though, with developments on Tropical Storm Harvey, which continues to batter a big chunk of Texas. At least two people have died as the storm hovers over land. This is live from San Jacinto. Harvey continues to weaken at least. Winds are sustained at 45 miles an hour right now. Here's Natasha Barrett on the ground live for us this morning. And good morning. We are getting a break from the rain here in Houston, but the wind is picking up. It's getting stronger as we speak out here outside. I also heard of people now so desperate to be rescued out of the floodwaters. They are using air mattresses to float to safety. Southeast Texas underwater in Houston, a flash flood emergency. Manholes overflowing streets turned into lakes, nearly impossible to drive through. The city's mayor urging residents to stay home. The streets are treacherous. It, it makes absolutely no sense uh, for anyone to be out on the road uh, unless it's an emergency. These people rescued from an apartment complex. How many we got coming? The storm packing a punch. I'm melancholy. I can't believe this is happening. And I have no apartment. My apartment was decimated. Rockport, where Harvey came ashore, a mangled ghost town. Roofs ripped off homes and buildings, boats destroyed. The wind was probably, I don't know, 100 plus, maybe 130, 140. There was a couple of times when it was probably even going faster than that. In Austin, an eerie scene. The state capitol under a cloud of darkness and underwater. This SUV, no match for Mother Nature. Shelters set up for those who need. Texas Governor Greg Abbott lending a hand. We will take care of our fellow Texans, but we do it as a team. I just checked in more than 70,000 people are without power in the city of Houston and that number continues to grow. A thousand people have called the police to be rescued. A thousand rescues have happened. More are coming in and one of the saddest pieces of information to pass along to you. Two people are dead. A mother and her child found inside their car in floodwaters. Reporting live from Houston, Natasha Barrett, ABC News just devastating there and President Trump is thanking all volunteers helping in Texas with Tropical Storm Harvey. He also held an hour long teleconference call from Camp David with White House officials in Washington. A senior White House official said Trump had numerous questions about emergency response, flooding and mass power outages. Trump says he wants to travel to Texas as soon as possible to show support without disruption. Earlier, he took to Twitter to thank food bank volunteers who are assisting the victims. Yeah, it's a huge mess there, Eric, and it's only going to get worse in some spots. In fact, we're looking at another 15 to potentially 25 inches on top of the one to two feet of rain they've already seen. And you can see it just continues to pile in from Galveston up in through Houston. We're looking at heavy showers right now and obviously uh, huge concerns when it comes to flooding. That's going to be the biggest issue and typically always is with these storms when they hit the coast. Right now, the center of the system is going to be just to the south and to the east of San Antonio with tropical force winds. We're expecting those winds to die down a bit, but that's not the big concern now. Obviously, it's going to be this continued rain that will continue into the first of next week. We'll keep an eye on it here at home. What a shot from Loveland Ski Area. We've got a beautiful, very dry start to our day. Uh, if you're heading up to the mountains or maybe you're coming back after a great long week in a camping, we've got dry conditions for the drive. Upper 60s, mid 70s between 8 and 10 o'clock. So another nice morning warm up, not quite as toasty as early as what we saw yesterday. By 2 o'clock, we'll be at 84 under a mostly sunny sky, and you're going to find mainly some mid to upper 80s today with plenty of sunshine. Very few storms expected here over the next couple of days. Coming up in just a few minutes, the Rockies are back in town tomorrow. We've got to look at that forecast, plus what to expect as you send the kids out the door early tomorrow morning. 
Thank you, Lisa. And here at home, we have some first responders watching that forecast closely. Emergency crews from Colorado are on standby waiting to help storm victims. Texas must first request the help in order for these crews to deploy. And then the Colorado Department of Emergency Management must give the green light. It's all about preparing for the Longmont Emergency Unit, which is waiting on the call to head down to Texas, and they would love to help with rescue efforts. You get antsy because you, you want to be down there. You want to be able to help. Like I said, this is what we train for. This is what we want to do. It's really about giving back. And there are times in Colorado where we're going to need help from other people as well. And the crew in Longmont said they could really leave at any moment, but it is safer for them to go once the storm has died down. We also know that firefighters from North and South Metro are heading down to help recovery efforts. If you are heading downtown this morning, expect to see some changes on the stretches of Broadway and Lincoln. This could be a bit of a mess. Starting today, Denver Public Works will be working to make the bus lanes 24 hours. Denver 7's Mike Iliopoulos tells us what this means for drivers. Well, this morning, the signs are posted up and down Broadway and Lincoln Street, warning the drivers about the change. Right now, the bus lanes are only reserved for buses during the peak times. After peak times, drivers can use this lane, which can help ease uh, traffic congestion a little bit since we do have that extra lane here. But that's all changing today. Denver Public Works will be out here marking the lanes with red paint. These bus lanes will now go 24 hours. Only buses will be allowed to use these lanes, and those changes will happen on Broadway from 17th Avenue to Exposition Avenue and on Lincoln Street from 6th Avenue to 14th Avenue. And this is all part of a transit enhancement project through the city. Once the changes are made, Denver Public Works will collect data. They'll study to see the effective effectiveness of the bus lane changes. That's set to complete to be completed in 2018. Now you can still use the lanes, but only to make right immediate turns. Reporting live in Denver, Mike Iliopoulos, Denver 7. 706 this weekend you can get into any national park for free. It's the National Park Service's 100th birthday. Admission is free, but you'll still have to pay for camping and reservations. The Denver City Council is getting ready to vote on a new immigration ordinance, but council members want to make it clear that the proposal is not a sanctuary city ordinance. Denver City Councilman Paul Lopez talks about how the proposal came about as he joins Andrew Hio on this weekend's Politics Unplugged. You had a role in coming up with this ordinance. Yeah, well, um, well thank you. Yeah, my, my co-sponsor, uh, Councilman Robin Kanich, and I have been working for months with members from the community, the public, and with the administration and our colleagues to kind of figure out how, uh, how we uh, protect public safety and, and make sure that that public trust that exists between the community and law, law enforcement is solid because it's the only way we really have been able to get this far in keeping Denver safe and keeping people engaged in uh, law enforcement. Because I think that is the biggest question for people is why does Denver need this? Well, you know, and he here's the thing. I mean, there there's a lot that's been going on in politics and, and it's no it's no mystery to know that uh, you know, this administration has been uh, very outright and, you know, at times uh, uh, very radical in terms of how they're approaching enforcement Im immigration enforcement and that discussion in our in our country. And it's there's been a lot of hysteria, a lot of rhetoric, and that has a real effect and the real effect is that people are very afraid and Lopez also talks about where the ordinance draws the line that's today at four on politics unplugged all right it doesn't count just yet but the Broncos took a win last night quarterback Trevor Simeon was the starter during the preseason home opener against the Packers Denver 7 Broncos insider Troy Rank brings us the storylines of the game the Broncos remained undefeated in the preseason. We know these games don't count, but they do matter, and they mattered specifically for Jamal Charles. He made his Broncos debut tonight, and boy, was it breathtaking. For my money, he made the team. It feel exciting to be my first job today. I feel like a Bronco today, so I feel good to be a Bronco today, and, and uh, seeing everybody running out the Maha Tunnel and everything, I feel real good, man. It's exciting to see him at practice, but um, the game's a whole different animal, and watching him play really well and uh, and live bullets was was cool for all of us to see. You know, we were all, we were just like everybody else. We wanted to see him go. The theme that emerged Saturday night: hate and love. The Broncos had an odd skirmish between linebacker Todd Davis and Akeem Talib. It got squashed. It was considered a miscommunication by both players. And then there was the odd proposal by Minelik Watson to his girlfriend in the stands during the game. And I'm not really a 
public person, but you know, I just thought it would just be something special that like, we can remember forever. I didn't even see it. I heard about it. I seen it. That's that's awesome, though, man. That's that's a way to get married. Trevor Simeon, in his first game since being named starter, finished 13 for 22. Rebounded after a slow start. The line looked better in the run game. Some injuries of note. I talked to Zach Kerr. He will get an MRI today. Paxton Lynch will get an MRI as well on his throwing shoulder. Reporting from Mile High Stadium, Troy Rank, Denver. Doesn't that make you excited for the season? Yeah, we look pretty good. I think so. Well, coming up, an underground tunnel operating in California used for smuggling. Coming up, see what Border Patrol agents uncovered and what it led to. Vandals target a statue of a famous explorer. What they did that has investigators leaving no stone unturned.